is that Jesus Christ soul was offered for my sin and all my guilt all my self condemnation all everything I give you the glory I give you the honor, the praise, and adoration. I thank you, Father, for another Sunday morning, another Sunday service. Father, we thank you that, Father, you and you alone, you are the only God who speaks. You are not an image. You are not man's creation. You are a sovereign God. You are God by yourself. You are the God who speaks. Even this morning, mighty God, I thank you that you are still going to speak. Heavenly Father, I surrender my intellect. I surrender my tongue unto your hands. Let me speak with the tongue of the learned. Heavenly Father, also pray for those who will be hearing your word. Let your word never come back to you void. Let your word, Father, accomplish that which you purpose to accomplish and prosper in the things that you send it to. Thank you, Father, for your prevailing word. Thank you, mighty God, for your prevailing word. For your Bible said, so mightily grew the word of God and prevail. Heavenly Father, I pray, let the word of God grow in this country. Let the word of grow, let the word of God grow in this nation, in our hearts, and prevail in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let your word, mighty God, uproot. Heavenly Father, demolish. For it is written that you're the word of God is like... It's like hammer that breaks and like fire that bends to ashes. Let your word break every form of demonic and satanic resistance in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let your word burn every form of resistance, every form of satanic and demonic resistance in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, let your word, mighty God, that breaks, destroy every evil altar that has been raised anywhere in this country. And let the way that is fire that burns, burn and destroying all those evil altars in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The only altar that will stand and reign in this country is the altar of Golgotha, the altar of the blood of Jesus Christ, the cross of the finished works of Calvary. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. You are welcome. I welcome you all. I must confess that we miss you very much. Let me say, I, I miss you very much. I can't wait for you to come back to this place where I'm teaching from so that we can eat together physically, not virtually as we are doing right now. Hallelujah. This morning's sermon is one of the sermons that God has placed in my spirit just like others. We are still continuing with the cross and the church. But today we are focusing on the effective church or the effective Christian. The effective church or the effective Christian. We are going to, this will, the effective church, the effective Christian, it will continue until next week. But today I just want to focus on one thing that makes the church not effective. Because if that is exposed, then we will become an effective church or an effective Christian. Hallelujah. It's, as we can, if, you, if you go to, just go to the word quickly, just go to the word quickly. The Bible says, 1 Thessalonians 5.23, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. There are three key words here, if not more than three. But the, the most important word here is the word sanctify, which is the synonym of the word to consecrate or to set apart. Say that may the God of peace himself sanctify you so God is looking for a sanctified church. If no, he's not looking for. If God has established a sanctified church, he has established a consecrated church, a church set apart for himself. 
So how is the enemy the light? How how so how is the enemy able to prevail in this instance? Why is the church of God looks like it does not exist? Because we we are forgetting that we are set apart. I want you to what 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 set us apart is one thing: the cross. The cross. Without the cross of Jesus Christ, there is no mercy, there is no grace, there is nothing that we can do without the cross, actually. Hallelujah. So how are we sanctified? By what Jesus Christ did on the cross. What did Jesus Christ did on the cross? He died for us and with us. That, that, is, that, that is important. Jesus Christ died for us and with us. He died for us on the cross and we died with him on the cross because Jesus Christ did not have to die on the cross. He died on the cross so that we might live. He died our death so that we might live. That's why, that's why Paul said, may you, may you May you be complete, your whole spirit. Check, check here. Your whole spirit. Soul. What spirit I see, soul is where the issues are. Soul, if the soul is not properly sanctified and preserved, that is where the guilt and condemnation thrives. Hallelujah. If the soul is not properly what? Sanctified. Completely. That is where the guilt and condemnation thrives. That, that I understand Paul's prayer. When he says, may your whole spirit, soul and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He knows that it is not of, about what we have done. It's about what Jesus Christ has done. Hallelujah. Ephesians 5.27 says that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having a spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she should be holy and without blemish. That is the church that Jesus Christ is looking for. A glorious church. I want us to focus at the word a glorious church. A church not having a spot or wrinkle. A church that is riddled with guilt. A church that is riddled with shame and condemnation can never stand against the onslaught of the enemy. It can never be active, effective. A child of God who is riddled with, 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 with shame and condemnation can never pray effectively and redeem the nation or the people that he or she is praying for. That's why I want us to understand how do we then become an effective church? The first thing that an effective church should do is that we sh is to place the cross at the center of our salvation. Hallelujah. The effective church should do what? Place the cross at the center of what? Of our salvation. And, and understand what is it that is there on the cross. Number one, the source of all our blessings and mercy is in the cross. Number two, our redemption and grace is where? In the cross. So if the church can understand that, will be effective. So now, let us go back to where guilt and condemnation came from. When Adam and Eve defied God and ate and acted against his word, it is written that what the first thing that they did was, was to do what to hide. They hide. They, they were feeling what? Guilty. 
Guilt removes you from the presence of God. I want you to know. So you can, you as a church or as Christians, we cannot be effective in the kingdom outside the cross. Are we together? As a church, we cannot be effective in the kingdom outside the church. By the guilt and condemnation, condemnation removes you from the cross. The Bible says, after Adam and Eve ate the fruit, what did they do? They, they disappeared from God. They hid themselves. And God said, Adam and Eve, where are you? He knew where they were, but he wanted them to answer themselves. Sometimes when the word of God comes, God knows, not sometimes, all the time, when, the, when God releases his word and you receive it, he knows your condition already. He knows where you stand already, but he wants you to respond to his word positively. Hallelujah. So they said, we have been hiding because we ate the fruit. And what did they hide? What did they do in their hiding? They developed a religion. They sew their own clothes with fig trees, with fig leaves. That is what men try to be in right standing with God through his own what? Efforts. That, that is where it all started. Why? What, what is the source of that? Guilt and condemnation. I'm talking to you, child of God. Maybe you are listening to me. You are seated in your house. You are condemning yourself. You are feeling guilty about something that you have committed today, yesterday, or some years ago. You can't forgive yourself. I want you to pay attention to this sermon. Because this is where your freedom is. Because if you are feeling like that, that is where Satan wants you. He knows that you cannot pray effectively when you are guilty. You cannot pray effectively when you are condemning yourself. He knows that. And when you are feeling, when you are feeling like that, that is where he wants you. You can never say in the name of Jesus because you are not in him. Even if you can say in the name, you will be sounding like the sons of Sceva. Why? Because you are outside the cross. Because of what? Guilt and, co and condemnation. So now, I want us to just have a, take a brief tour on why Satan wants us to be guilty. I'm not, I'm not glorifying Satan by mentioning his name. I'm exposing him. Because there is Jesus who wants these things to be known. And if the church does not know this, then this guy, whom I won't mention his name again, will have a, will have a part in the Christian house, houses. One, Satan was one of the big angels in heaven with a good position. I'm using today's language. He was a seraphim who was leading worship. He decided that he wants to be equal with God. In other words, otherwise he exalted himself, and by so doing, he fell. Listen to this. Satan exalted himself. By so doing, he did what? He fell. As, as, he, fall, as he fell, he, he established his own kingdom. Contrary to the kingdom of God. And the main purpose of his kingdom is to weaken the church. He, he knows that he cannot destroy the church. I want, I, I want you to, to, to listen to that carefully. Is to weaken the church. Because the, the, uh, Jesus Christ said, in this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. So nothing can ever destroy the church. But the church which is in ignorance can be weakened. Hallelujah. So why? Because he hates God, his, the children of God, and the purposes of God. Why does he hate people so much? Because we are made according to his image. Even he himself, Satan, was not made according to the image of God. Amen. So now came Jesus... 
I love Jesus Christ. Jesus humbled himself. He humbled himself to the point of death. And he humbled himself. He was exalted. He's still exalted. And he was given a name. You could go look to Philippians 2, 4, going down to 7. He was given a name above all names. And he became what? He's, he's a creator, Jesus Christ. Check this. Jesus Christ, the creator, who became a savior. Are we together? So now I want you to just put your mind there, there on guilt. So now this man, the other one, the unemployed angel, he didn't give up. After when he fell, he still has access to God. And the Bible, the way I see it, I think it's only God who can recognize that this is Satan. Because the Bible says that he, he, he knows how to, to, to make himself an angel of light. So when the angels of God were presenting themselves to God in the book of Job, he presented himself also. And God, being God, is part of that. I know my angels, but even though that one is, is, he looks like them, he fell from the grace. He asked him, what do you want? Where are you coming from? He said, I was going to and from. And then he said, but God, you know, there is, I'm paraphrasing, there is that man there called Job, you know. He's a good man. God, God said, Job is a righteous man. Satan accused. He said, no, that man is worshiping you because one, you have blessed him. Two, you have placed a hedge around him and all that concerns him. In other words, what is he doing? Accusing. In the book of Revelation also, he's called what? The accused of the brethren. So, if you can check Genesis, he tempt in order to accuse. So, his main weapon has been what? Guilt and condemnation. Amen. And if a church or a Christian cannot get out of that trap, you pray prayers, you are praying, you are fasting, we end up jumping into the well of religion. Why? Religion is where we do that. You know what? I have done all. Now I'm sure that I'm in right standing with God. And we what in, at the expense of what? Of the cross. Are we together? So, fast forward, Jesus came. He took all the rebellion of men. That was, that was passed on by Satan to men. That's why Romans, we have Romans 8, says that there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. But now I want us to look at how, how did Jesus Christ did that? Because if you don't understand this, many of us, we, we kneel down. Father, forgive me of all my sins that I've committed. You know, Father, I, I will never do it again. When you stand up, you are still guilty. You are, st you are still co condemning yourself. And after feeling that, realize that, no, maybe I didn't pray enough. Let me go to the mountain. So now the reason for going to the mountain is wrong. You go to the mountain. Father, I'm on top of Mount Kilimanjaro. I'm praying. I've committed my sin. Please forgive me. Nothing works. Mm. I'm still feeling guilty. Okay. Let, let me go to the river. And then now, next, next to the river. And then you end up doing all the things. Okay, let me give away my house. It's, it go, it's good to, to, to give. But the motive must be right. Let me give away my car. I'm still feeling guilty of that sin. Why is nothing changing? It's because you, you are omitting the cross. You are omitting the cross. When, when you are guilty, when you are feeling condemned, look unto the cross. Go to the cross and say, Jesus, what does the cross 
and you mean to me. Ask yourself that question. What does this mean to me? What does this what what is it that you have done that I don't know in the cross? I know that I'm saved, but I'm struggling with this guilt and condemnation. I'm not effective in my ministry. I am a worshiper. I'm not worshiping effectively because there is this sin that I've committed. I have prayed, but nothing is happening. Let me tell you, child of God, it's because you don't know. Number one, God does not deal with us with guilt. He deals with us with conviction. Guilt is vague. It is not specific. And, not, and it's not rooted. Guilt will make you go over. You, you won't know what is, you will know what you have done, but the, the accusations about what you have done will be multiplied hundredfold. To be like, oh, you call yourself a pastor, but you can't even do this. And when you're walking, you call yourself a Christian. You can't even do this. When, when you do do something, you call yourself a worshiper. You can't even do this. So that's, that's how guilt works. And why, and why is Satan, or not, I reverse that word, I'm not mentioning. And why is this unemployed cherubim, or with this unemployed angel using this a lot? Where there is condemnation, there is no power. A, a, a powerless person, is, that's the reason why, you see, in the, in the old uh, Roman Empire, what they do, when you are guilty, when you are standing in their court, they will make you, it was a requirement that you don't, you don't take care of yourself. You grow your beard, your beard you, you don't comb your hair, you don't wear nice clothes. You must stand in front of the court with filthy rags. That has to do with what? With your self-esteem. And they know that when you are like that already, whether the, the judge says you are not guilty or not, you are already what? Condemned. The whole city, when you walk around, it sees you as what? As condemned. So even in the spiritual realm, when you wear a, a filthy garment of condemnation and guilt, you're, you are no longer effective. You don't have any power. You can pray, but they'll say, but who is praying? Do, 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 do you get what I mean? They will say, but who is praying? I mean, look at you. I mean, no, no. I mean, demons will be looking at you, but looking at you, I mean, you cannot tell me to go anywhere. I mean, really, I mean, we know Christ. Christ is cleaner than this because you are wearing filthy garments. And by so doing, you have become what powerless. When you say, in the name of Jesus, demons even kicks you, like the sons of Sceva. They said, okay, you know, these guys, we know them. Look at their garments. They know the name, but they don't know the person. They know the name, but they don't have the relationship with the cross. So imagine now the whole church is wearing the same garments, praying for the nation in guilt. What will happen? Nothing. Nothing. But when the Holy Spirit convicts you, when, when the Holy Spirit convicts you out of sin, he's specific. The perfect example, I'll give the example of Saul. When he was on his way of, uh, to, to Damascus, Jesus Christ was specific. Why are you persecuting my church? And after that, Saul was given direction. Go to Ananias. He will pray for you. You'll be able to do what? To see. And after the conviction of, after the conviction, after he was convicted of sin, he was, he was also what? Restored by the same Holy Spirit who convicted. So there is a difference between guilt and conviction. Are we together? When you are convicted, you know what to do. First John 1 I said, if we confess our sins, 
He is quick and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all forms of unrighteousness. So when you are convicted, you know that you need to confess the sins. And when you confess the sins, what are you basing your confession on? What the finished works of Calvary. Jesus Christ died for me on the cross. He died with my sins. He was buried with me on the tomb. He was buried for my sins. And when he rose again, I rose up with him. I am now what? A new creation. All things has passed away. So you know what to do. After, 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 after confessing those words, when you stand up, you know that no, that weight is gone. You are able to go before God guilt-free. You are able to face Satan and demons and say, you, in the name of Jesus, go away. You will say, but yesterday you did what? He said, ah, you are the only one who remembers that. And by the blood of Jesus Christ, I've been cleansed of that sin. I don't know what you're talking about. The, whatever that you're trying to remind me, it's on the cross. I have authority over you by the name of Jesus. And as I'm saying by the name, you, you live and you, 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 you have what boldness. You have boldness to pray. You have boldness to declare the word of God. You are what? An, an, an effective child of God in the spiritual realm. Let us go to the Bible. Let us go to the Bible. Isaiah 64 verse 6. Our, our self-righteousness is the ones that create a distance between us and God. He say, but we are all like unclean thing, and all our righteousness are like filthy rags. We all fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. You see, our works outside the finished works of Calvary. They, 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 they are like filthy rags. I, I, I'm talking to you, child of God. You, you, you have been depending on what you can do. But today I want you to, to pause, take a break, and go back and study the cross. What did Jesus Christ did for you on the cross? And if we look at Isaiah 53, as, okay, Isaiah 53, verse 10, He said, yet it pleased the Lord God to bruise him. He has, put with, he has put him to grief. When shall you make his soul an offering for sin? He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his land. The soul of Jesus Christ was given as an offering to sin. Why the soul? That is where our emotions are. Hallelujah. Understand this, that the soul of Jesus Christ was, was, was given to us as a what? The, the, in, the, the, in, in Leviticus, Levitical priesthood, there is a guilt offering and a sin offering. But the soul of Jesus Christ was given to us both as a what? Guilt offering and a what? And a sin offering. So whatever that place in the area of your soul, take it to the word. Say, but. He has put him to grief. He has made his soul an offering for sin. Why, why, why did the Bible become specific? That he has made his soul, not spirit. He's dealing with our what? condemnation, our guilt, so that we might know that we are free from this. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ has freed you from that guilt. And guilt open is, becomes a doorway for sicknesses and demonic oppression. When it is not dealt with properly, it can make you sick. When it's not dealt you properly, it can make you depressed. But let your soul today be free because Jesus Christ has offered his soul as a sin offering so that you can be guilt-free. 
you can be condemnation free whenever the accuser of the brethren who Satan comes and accuses you, tell him that no. Maybe you are right about the acts, but not the results. The results of those acts is that Jesus Christ's soul was offered for my sin. And all my guilt, all my self-condemnation, all everything has been offered on the cross. Hallelujah. And check this. If, if we go to Isaiah 61 verse 10, there is something, there is something it, 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 it interesting there. Isaiah 61 verse 10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be grateful in, in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation. Not garment. He has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. You see, there are two things that... that after he has given his soul for you, as a, as a sin offering so that you can be guilt free. You are no longer wearing what? A filthy rag. You are clothed with what? With the garment of salvation. Meaning when God looks at you, he does not see, he does not see God. He does not see Mr. Tlengan. He does not see you. He sees what Jesus Christ has done on the cross. So you are clothed with the cross. You are clothed with the garment made of the cross. Hmm. Do you know how powerful you are? Imagine when you stand up. When they, are cute, when they look at you, Satan will come running. I know, I know that Kathy did this yesterday. When, when, when he appears, well, Kathy, Kathy is clothed with a garment. How does he know this? He's clothed with the garment of salvation and the garment of righteousness. He, he, he has a right standing with God. I mean, He's supposed to be condemning himself. I mean, this is what he did yesterday. No, little does he know that Kathleen has went to the Bible and searched the scriptures. And it found where it was written that there was Zachariah. Zachariah 3, 3 verse 3 to 9. Zachariah was wearing a, a filthy garment. And God said, take away that garment. Okay. Can you go to, 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 to Zachariah quickly? I, 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 I want you to see something. You are a powerful child of God. Hallelujah. I want you to forgive yourself. From this Sunday onwards, you are walking in power. Yeah, it doesn't matter what you did when. Don't allow your spirit, your soul to carry any condemnation. Jesus Christ has been your soul offering for you. Hmm. You know, you know, what I love about the Bible, Mr. Ngovin, is that it, it is specific soul. And if you can check the soul, all the emotions, guilt, happiness, joy, peace, it is there. When you don't have peace, go to Isaiah 53, verse 10. Jesus Christ, my soul offering. He has taken all, everything that resides in my soul. He took it with him on the cross. That which has made Adam and Eve to hide from God. He took it. Because Adam and Eve, they lost the glory. They realized that they were naked. Now the soul said to them, you are guilty. After the soul said to them, you are guilty, they became what? Fearful. So guilt, condemnation, give birth to fear. You fear the presence of the Lord. No, I cannot go to church. Me go to church? No. I haven't been to church for the whole year. I cannot go to church. What will, you know, what, what will pastors say? They will say, because I'm coming back to church because I'm in trouble, because I've lost my job, because no. That is the voice of Satan. God is like the father of a prodigal son. The moment you walk, to the gate of his house. He will be running to you. Embracing you. And giving you what? 
a new garment of acceptance, of righteousness, that you are accepted as a beloved. Hallelujah. Let us go to Zechariah. That's why I love the cross so much. I've committed myself that I will preach. I will preach what? Jesus Christ. Him what? Crucified. The cross. Zechariah 3, verse 3 to 9. I want us to... Now Joshua was clothed with a filthy garment and was standing before the angel. Look at the A, the a of the angel's capital. Ne? We'll come to that. Then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And to him, he said, See, I have removed your iniquity from you, and I will clothe you with rich robes. Hallelujah. God wants to take away those filthy garments from you. Those filthy garments of guilt, of condemnation. If Jesus Christ, of which is done, Jesus Christ has died for you, his blood has washed you from all those sins. He said, even if your blood, your sin were as red as colored, the blood of Jesus Christ will wash you and it will become whiter than the snow. It doesn't matter what you did, child of God. Come back home. Come back to the cross. Jesus is waiting for you. He say, yes, yes, given an instruction, those filled garments must be taken off from you. And check this. And he said, let him, let them put a clean turban on his head. You see, you, I will, we'll talk about the turban. So they put a clean turban on his head. They put the clothes on him and the angel of the Lord stood by. I said to you, sister, that in the Roman culture when you were guilty, from your head to your clothes, your hair must be mixed up. No shave. You must not shave. You must be wearing filthy garments. But check what Jesus Christ started with. With the turban. He said, put a clean turban on his head. A mark of glory. That one is not longer guilty of anything. As you take away the filthy garment, let him be glorified. Verse 6, then the angel of the Lord ad, ad, admonished Joshua, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, if you walk in my ways, and if you will keep my command, then you will also judge my house, and likewise have charge of my courts. I will give you places to walk among those who stand, who stand here. Hear, O Joshua the high priest, you and your companions who sit before you, for they are a wondrous sign. For behold, I'm bringing forth my servant, the branch, that is Jesus Christ. For behold, the stone that I've laid before you, Joshua. Upon the stone are seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave inscription, says the Lord of hosts. And I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. Check here. The Joshua receiving the clean garments, the iniquity of the land is removed in one day. Can you see? When, when, when the church is living outside guilt and condemnation. When the church is clothed with garments, one, it becomes what the Bible says in verse 9. No, not verse 9. Verse 8. Yea, O Joshua, the priest, you and your companions who sit before you, for they, for they are a wondrous sign. A church will become a wondrous sign. A child of God will be said, you, you know, you'll be living the life of a wonder, but I mean, is, is that not him? How can he do that? I mean, how does he know the signs and times? How does he prophesy? I mean, how does he pray and things happen? How does he live? You know, he's so happy in the midst of storm. How does, that, 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 that man is just a wonder. Why? The guilt and shame is removed. Hallelujah. Are we together, church? Are we together? Let us go back to Joshua. Not Joshua. Isaiah 61 verse 10. We'll come back to Zachariah. Isaiah 61 verse 10. There are two things that I, I just passed. He said, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. 
He has clothed me with garments of salvation. One, the garment of salvation means what? Your sin has been removed completely. Hallelujah. Your sin has been what? Removed completely. You are what? Forgiven, child of God. You are forgiven. Go and stand before God. Why? Because you have another garment. A garment of righteousness. What does righteousness mean? 2 Corinthians 5.21 Jesus Christ became sin for us that we might be the righteousness of God. You have the right standing with God as if you have never sinned in your, ever in your life. Guilt is not your portion. Condemnation is not your portion. Be an effective child of God. Step out of guilt and step into the finished works of Calvary. Step out of guilt and step into the one who gave his soul for you. Jesus Christ, your creator, you are Lord, your Savior, your, sa your righteousness. He is all in one. When you are in him, nothing shall be impossible with you. With you. That's why I love Daniel said, but the people who know their God shall be strong and perform what? Great exploits. Exploits are waiting for you. You are a wonder in the kingdom of God. You are a wonder. Be, be like Joshua the high priest. Do, do, you know why I'm, do you know why I'm choosing Joshua the high priest? Because Revelation says we, we, he has made us kings. Revelation 5.10. He has made us kings and priests to our God. And we shall reign here on earth. And we see the same thing that Zacharias promised the, 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 the same thing. Zacharias promised the same thing. If you walk in my ways, if you keep my commandment, that's Zacharias 3.7, then you shall also judge my house. You are reigning. You will you'll judge my courts. You know, when you step into the court of heaven, that's where matters are decided. You will speak to God, guilt-free, condemnation-free, that, Father, I'm here. I'm here in the court of heaven. I've got my advocate, Sir Jesus Christ, who is, pre who is presenting me, who has said to me, by the reason of what he has done on the cross, I'm, I'm, I'm clean, I'm wearing this clean this clean garment, and I am righteous by the finished works of my advocate. Now, Father, I've got a situation here on this land. May you release your spirit of judgment and judge these evil altars. Judge their works. Judge their priests. Let their works be desolate. Why? But Satan will say, but he, he cannot stand then. God, I know that man. He cannot stand then. Yes, he, but Jesus Christ will say, your honor, I have died for his past, present, and future sins. By my blood, this man has been declared righteous. So as he speaks, your honor, daddy, he deserves your hearing because he's not guilty of anything. So whatever that is asking you, daddy, it's as if I'm asking because I gave him my soul. My, I have been his soul offering. What is in his soul is what I have. My relationship with him, when I died, I died with him. He died with me. When I was crucified on the cross, he was there. It's because of him. That, it's because of what this man, Satan, is accusing him of. That's the reason why I died. So he cannot be guilty because I have died once and for all. Master God, I petition you, grant this child his petition. And when you say in the name of Jesus... That is what's happening in the court of heaven. When you say in the name of Jesus, that was in the court of heaven. Jesus began to stand on your case. That's why God says, 
to Joshua, I likewise have charge of my courts. I will give you places to walk among those who stand here. When you walk, you walk in authority. Whatever you say, come to pass. You will be like Samuel. God says in the book of 1 Samuel that he never let any, any of his word fall away to the ground. Meaning everything that Samuel declared became that which he has declared. Hallelujah. But when you are guilty, you cannot be effective. I want us to go to Romans 8.1. In closing, Romans 8.1. Now that you know what Jesus did for you, we can say this, that there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. That's revelation. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. You are free from the law of sin and death. Jesus Christ has become your sin offering. Go for his word. Your filthy garment has been removed. You have been given two important things. Two important garments. The garments of salvation, I don't know how many they are, and the garment of righteousness. The garment, the garments of salvation and the robe of righteousness. So when you stand, even when demons look at you, they don't see you anymore. Once you learn to get rid of guilt, shame and condemnation, demons will start seeing the one who died for you, Jesus Christ. When you say in the name, in the name, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, when you say in the name, when you use the name of Jesus, things will begin to happen in your family, in your workplace, in your businesses, in your finances. Your prayer life will begin to change. You won't be lazy to wake up and pray. You, because why? You don't have the spirit of Adam and Eve. You are not afraid of the presence of God. You run to the presence of God. Why? Because you are not guilty. You are not condemned. Jesus Christ died for you. If ever you are listening to this sermon and you have not received the Lord Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior, I would like you to make this important decision that maybe you have been living a life of condemnation all the time. People have been reminding you of what you did. It doesn't matter what you did. Whether you have killed a person, whether you have killed a donkey, whether you have done, but if ever you, have, you are repenting, you are genuinely repenting, and you know that God can save you, of which I know that he will, I want you to lift up your hands wherever you are. It doesn't matter what you did. I want you to come back home. Jesus Christ has been waiting for you. He wants to take off those filthy garments. Those filthy garments of whatever that you call yourself. Maybe you call yourself a robber. Maybe you call yourself a prostitute. Maybe you call yourself a slanderer. Maybe you call yourself a gossiper. And you feel that you are guilty of those things. But I want to put it to you to this morning that there is an angel who has been commanded to take away your garment. The cross has done it for you. An angel has been commanded to take away your filthy garment. The cross has done it for you. I want you to stand up and say, Lord Jesus Christ, I come before you this, this morning. I, I accept and believe that you died on the cross and you rose up on the third day. I pray that be the Lord of my life. Write my name in the book of life. Save me, Lord Jesus Christ. 
By myself, I cannot do anything. If you have prayed this prayer, you are a child of God. If you are far, find a Bible-believing church next to you. If you are close to us, you know where we are. Come, 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 come. We are ready to guide you so that we can live a guilt and condemnation-free life. The one who died for you is not just a son of God. He is also your creator, Jesus Christ. And what? Your savior. And what? Your righteousness. Wow. And I'm going to repeat this. You have the right to walk. God has given you the charge of his courts. You know, that is the most powerful thing, child of God, if you are saved. To be in charge of the courts, that is the decision-making place of God. Where God make decisions, judge nations. He's saying, now that you're no longer guilty, pray for this nation. In one day, Zechariah said, the iniquity of your nation will be removed in one day. So, if you want to be an effective church, move away from guilt. The iniquity of this nation shall be removed in one day, which is one day, the day you stand up and declare and decree that you are no longer guilty. You are no longer condemned. That is the day that your filthy garments are removed. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for your word you have spoken. Merciful and gracious God, we love you so much. Mm, we love you so much. We love you. We love you so much. Jesus Christ, we thank you for dying for us on the cross. We thank you that it is done. We thank you for the finished works of Calvary. We bless you, mighty God. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you want to pray for this nation, only an effective church can stand up and pray for this nation without all the filthy garments. Hallelujah. God loves you. Don't forget group A and group B. Look at the account at the end of this, of this video. Do the right thing. You are the beloved of the Lord. Jesus Christ didn't die for your condemnation. He died for your redemption. You are redeemed from all forms of sins. His soul became a sin offering so that you can be guilt free. Leviticus 17, 11 says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. His blood is given you in your life. In Jesus' name. God bless you. We are meeting again very soon. Thursday, Google Meet. Let's continue. God bless you.